Hello and welcome to module 31 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. In the last module, uh, we solved a numerical problem. Today it is a continuation of that, we will continue solving more problems. Today our problems will although be more uh, uh, not numerical, but more focused on concepts. Okay. So, let us start the problems. Uh, so, the first problem is a relatively simpler problem, but a conceptually very important problem. So, I really want you to take a pause, uh, draw the potential energy for along the reaction coordinate and a coordinate that is perpendicular to the reaction coordinate sitting at transition state. So, this please do take a pause and you should be able to draw do these plots, do take a pause draw now. Okay, hopefully you have taken a pause. Uh, so, now let us solve it together. Uh, so, for the first one, we have to draw the potential energy along the reaction coordinate. So, uh, this is the figure that you have commonly seen probably in every single textbook in kinetics, right. So, you get a figure like this where this is reactants, this is products and this is the transition state, the maximum struck point, okay. So, this is your very familiar figure. However, what I want you to also understand from this course is that if I choose a coordinate perpendicular to reaction coordinate at the transition state, I will get a, a energy surface that is going to look like this and this is my transition state. Okay. So, this is a very important concept, transition state is a minima for any coordinate that passes perpendicular to the reaction coordinate. Right. So, uh, once more a contour plot if I draw, uh, these kind of contour plots that I have drawn a few times now, this is reaction coordinate, let me just change the color uh, in color red, uh, this is a re coordinate that is perpendicular to reaction coordinate. So, this is reaction this is perpendicular to reaction coordinate. Okay. So, along the reaction coordinate you see a figure like this, along a direction perpendicular to reaction coordinate which is if you are walking along this you will get something like this, alright, get back to black color, alright. Okay. Second problem is slightly harder but it is an interesting problem and it shows you how to include quantum mechanical effects in transition state theory. Uh, so, let us imagine I have only a one dimensional well and somehow a temperature is maintained at some temperature t. Let us say the frequency is given to you uh, omega here and the barrier height is much more than kt, this E a is much greater than kt and we are going to include tunneling in this question now. Uh, so, in a module, some modules ago, 5, 6 modules ago, we solved this problem without any tunneling. So, you can go back to that module, see how we solved this problem and now the question is can you also include tunneling effects in it. So, what I have provided you here is that the probability of tunneling at an energy E less than E a is given by this formula, where alpha is some constant and for energy greater than E a, you can assume that the transmission is 1. So, now can you estimate the rate constant? You can make any approximations or assumptions that you want to make. Pause the video and attempt this problem on your own. All right. Hopefully, you have paused the video and you have attempted the problem at least. This is not an easy problem, but we will you have to make at least attempts. So, let us try to uh, attack this problem. Well, we will have to go back to our fundamentals. Uh, how we solved this problem earlier? Well, idea is the same. This is what we are going to do. 
uh, let us say my and I am set some energy E. at that energy E, what is the rate constant and what is the probability of being at that energy E? So, if I integrate this together, I will get the total rate and energy cannot be negative because I cannot be lower than this uh, minima. So, uh, this is what I have to calculate, fine. Uh, rho, I am going to approximate as we have always done in transition state theory as the equilibrium. So, that is given by e to the power of minus beta e in one dimension. Okay. So, uh, we will find this n as always as 0 to infinity, this should be 1. So, now this is easy to integrate. this if I integrate I get something like this. Okay, so, you can quickly show this uh, easily enough. Okay. So, the first part I am good I know rho of E. Second part, uh, how do I calculate this k of E? Well, let us start by saying that this is equal to at least uh, for E great less than E A and E greater than E A. We will calculate them separately. So, this is equal to nothing but omega over 2 pi for E greater than E A. So, if my energy is above this point, then my rate is omega over 2 pi and once back we uh, argued this in some more detail in our uh, module it is omega over 2 pi because omega over 2 pi is the frequency of hitting the transition state. So, this is my transition state I am sitting here the probability that I will hit this point uh, in is one time period in every one time period I will hit this exactly once in the forward direction. So, again uh, this is approximate. I am making the uh, transition state approximations here. Okay. So, uh, transition state approximation is that I only look at rate in the forward direction and in the forward direction I will hit this transition state once in one time period. Okay. What about E less than E A? So, uh, we are going to approximate that as omega over 2 pi that is so my energy is let us say here I am sorry this was E for E greater than E A and this is E less than E A. Okay. Uh, well, in one time period I am going to assume I tunnel once. So, I come here and then I have some probability of leaking through. Okay. So, again this is somewhat open ended problem it is doing uh, estimates and so this I am going to say is e to the power of minus alpha E A minus E. Okay. So, that is a way to estimate things. So, k of t then becomes 0 to infinity d E rho of E which we showed is beta e to the power of minus beta E into k of e. Now, k of e uh, is divided into 0 to e a into omega over 2 pi e to the power of uh, minus alpha e a minus e plus e a to infinity d e beta Okay. Okay. So, uh, what we had discussed uh, several modules ago was that we ignored this part, the first part because we were assuming no tunneling and we had only this second part, but now we have the tunneling contribution as well. So, let us uh, solve these two integrals 
the second integral is easier so that I will start with uh, beta e to the power of minus beta e omega over 2 pi. So, this is beta omega over 2 pi which are constants I integrate uh, e to the power of minus beta e. So, this will be equal to omega over 2 pi. So, this you can quickly verify this is not hard at all ok e to the power of minus beta infinite is 0. And so, you are left with only E a part ok. Uh, so, let us also do the first part now. Uh, e alpha E a minus E. Well, this is also not hard really beta omega over 2 pi you have to just be careful 0 to E a uh, d e e to the power of minus alpha E a into e to the power of alpha minus beta E. Okay, so, I have just taken the exponential separated this term out because it is a constant and taken the parts that had E in common and taken them together. So, this is nothing but beta omega over 2 pi e to the power of minus alpha E a into e to the power of alpha minus beta E over alpha minus beta from 0 to E a. So, this is nothing but uh, beta omega over 2 pi Uh, e to the power of minus uh, alpha E a into e to the power of alpha, alpha minus beta E a minus 1. Okay. Well, so the total rate is nothing but the sum of these two. Uh, beta over alpha minus beta and I just take this thing inside. So, I get e to the power of minus beta E a minus e to the power of minus alpha E a. So, I have just simplified the second part a little bit here, uh, but that is not very important like the important is the concept how to set it up. And so, the setup was we calculate the rate constant as integral over all energies. And for E less than E a, we estimated it to be omega over 2 pi multiplied by tunneling probability. For E greater than E a, we simply took omega over 2 pi. And once you have that, the rest is uh, just numerical. Okay. Okay. So, now the next problem I have for you is that I have a particular reaction which is of importance for uh, atmospheric chemistry, CH plus N2 going to some transition state to HCN plus N. And people experimentally found that the rate constant fits this formula. So, you use transition state theory and estimate what alpha must be. Okay. Uh, we have given you a few things to assume, you can assume transition state to be linear and rotation vibrational and electronic partition functions to be independent of temperature. So, take a pause and calculate alpha. Okay. Hopefully, you are back, you have a value of alpha with you. We will calculate it together and see if we our results match. So, we are going to use this formula okay. and we are going to look only at the temperature part. So, I am going to use proportional to first I have this T coming from this. Okay. Then I have Q translate transition state. So, that Q transition state uh, well will be Q sorry q translational into q rotation divided by q ch uh, translational into q ch rotational into q n2 translational into q n2 rotation okay i have, I have gotten rid of uh, vibrational part or electronic part, alright. 
So, this is proportional to temperature and again I am going, not going to look at any other factor other than temperature. Translational part that is dependent on T to the power of 3 half. Rotational part, rotational part we are assuming the transition state to be linear. For linear I use this formula, so I get T divided by CH translational, well all translations are 3 half. Rotational of CH, CH is also linear. N2 translational, N2 rotational, all linear molecules proportional to T. Okay. So, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, this cancels with this and I am left with T to the power of minus 3 half. This implies alpha is, okay. remember I still have that exponential factor that I have simply chosen not to write so far. And all other co common factors there that I have been not writing all the mass and 2 pi and m and all that. Okay. So, if I compare this formula with this you can easily see alpha is minus 3 half. Okay. Okay. This is a conceptual question. Uh, for the following one dimensional surface, I really like one dimensional surfaces, uh, in solution at some temperature T, where should I draw the transition state, which is the best line representing transition state? Is it A, if I draw it here and do my transition state theory with this dividing surface? Should I draw it at B and do my transition state theory uh, with this dividing surface or should I do my transition state theory? with the C dividing surface. So, take a pause, think about it okay, and come up with your own answer. Okay. So, hopefully you have thought about it uh, and let us, so let us discuss it together now. Uh, okay. So, the correct answer is B, this is the best choice, why? So, you have to look into the assumptions made into the transition state theory. This is what this question is about. A, the, this is my reactant, this is my product. Okay. If you draw the dividing surface at A, you can have trajectories that are going up and they just have a more chance of reverting back compared to B. You can have that happening at B as well. But at B, a trajectory that crosses here sees a force that looks like this. So, this is more inclined to keep on moving forward. Okay. So, at A, a trajectory that is going up might not have enough energy and it just turns back. So, uh, A, more recrossings, which is not good. Okay. In transition state theory, remember our assumption is no recrossing. So, the best choice is where the recrossings are minimal and A has more recrossing compared to B. Okay. What about C though? In C, I have this kind of energy surface, I have my trajectories coming here and they are simply falling down. Is not C better then? No. Here the other assumption comes in picture. The equilibrium assumption will be bad. Remember that we also assume that transition state is at equilibrium with the reactants. So, transition state will not be at equilibrium. Well, again you can think of it intuitively, you have these trajectories that are coming up and they are just uh, forward crashing into the products like this. So, there is no reason that at C you can expect a good Boltzmann ratio, good Boltzmann distribution e to the power of minus beta h, there the positive velocities are much more of a faster, right, because trajectories are coming up and then crashing like this. So, the transition state will not be at equilibrium, so the other assumption does not hold very well. So, B is the optimal point where you will get minimum recrossings as well as the equilibrium assumption will hold better. Okay. Uh, the final question for today. Uh, you think of a reaction like O plus HCl going to OH plus Cl 
and this is again a conceptual question. Uh, calculate the total number of frequencies that are needed uh, assuming transition state to be linear versus nonlinear. Again take a pause, uh, solve this problem on your own. This is an important problem as far as this course is concerned uh, and get an answer. Pause this video now and solve this problem on your own. Okay, hopefully you are back. Uh, so let us solve this problem together. Okay. Remember that for transition state, I need frequencies of reactants and transition state. I do not worry about products. Reactants here O well that is an atom, atom does not have frequencies that is not there is no vibration there, no frequency. HCl one frequency, the stretch right. So, HCl can uh, vibrate one frequency only. Linear transition state, how many frequencies are required for a linear transition state is the question. So, I have O, H, C, L, 3 atoms. For 3 atoms, I have 9 total degrees of freedom. Right, X, Y, Z corresponding to each atom. Out of which I have 3 translationals and two rotations. Remember that a linear molecule only has two rotation. So, whatever remains are the number of vibrations. Okay. Now, there is still a little bit of trick. At transition state, we need one frequency less compared to the total number of frequencies. Why? Because in transition state theory, the frequency of the reaction coordinate is not considered. So, minus 1 uh, reaction coordinate frequency which is an imaginary frequency. So, 3 frequencies. So, for if the transition state is linear, I need to calculate 1 frequency for HCl and 3 frequencies for OHCl. Okay. Now, for B non-linear, I will do the same math. I will have 9 total minus 3 translational minus 3 rotations. So, a non-linear molecule has 3 rotations instead of 2. So, I get 3 frequencies and I subtract 1 reaction coordinate frequency. So, I get 2 frequencies. Okay. So, for A, I will need 4 total number of frequencies. Three for transition state, one for uh, reactant, and for B, I will need three total number of frequencies. Two for transition state, and one for reactants. Okay. So uh, we will stop with this problem session now. Uh, hope you got to learn, and you hope you tried these problems on your own. Thank you very much.